Hey guys, what's up? This is Mackenzie Criswell here with a tutorial for using a preset that I created for After Effects. Alright, so you're probably wondering why we're inside of Lightroom. Every time I've started a tutorial, it's been uh, starting off with After Effects. I think I've done one inside of uh, 3ds Max. And uh, clearly on my website it says I'm a filmic, not a photographer, so what would I be doing in Lightroom? Well, the fact of the matter is, while I may be a filmmaker, I have a lot of friends who are photographers. So I hear about Lightroom, I open it up every once in a while, and I, I actually do do a little bit of photography sometimes, just when I've got nothing else to do. And uh, I was playing around in Lightroom, and I, I actually initially discovered it in Camera Raw for Photoshop, but there's a cool little slider in Lightroom called Clarity. And if you've ever used Lightroom, you've probably seen this and just kind of played around with it a little bit to see what it does. And, uh, le well, let's, let's just go ahead and take a look. I kind of showed you there for a second. But as we increase the slider, it kind of increases contrast in the midtone. And in this particular picture, well, it's actually a clip from a video, the flowers kind of start to look really stupid. So if you just pay attention to the sky, you'll really see the detail that it's pulling out of the sky. It just really pulls some beautiful detail and, you know, just in a lot of cases makes a shot look gorgeous. So I was thinking, you know, okay, wow, this is great. I wish I could do this to some of my videos. And I started looking around at movies and things, and I noticed, you know, there were even some movies that use this type of effect. And so, you know, I'm like, well, there's got to be a way to. So I, I looked around in Speed Grade, Premiere, After Effects. I couldn't find anything that I liked a lot. Granted, I'm not all that great with Speed Grade yet, uh, I did find something in Magic Bullet called Pop that did something kind of similar, but Magic Bullets is like a $200 add-on for After Effects, so it seemed a little bit ridiculous to use that. So what I've done instead is attempted to create a plugin that will do this inside of After Effects for us. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and talk about how you get the plugin and then how you can install an After Effects before we actually start going into detail about the plugin. So, if you come to my website and you're watching this tutorial, you'll probably see something like this. It'll say clarity effect, and then you'll have the video, and below it, there'll be a little blue box that says download project file. Now, it'll be how you'll download it. It'll download right up here. If you're watching it on Vimeo, I'll try to remember to put a link down here to take you straight to the page on my website. That way you can download it. Whenever you finish downloading the file, you'll get something kind of like this, a zipped file. This says Clarity Plugin on it. Now you can go ahead and just click that. And it'll take in a moment and it'll extract and you'll get a folder like this, Clarity Plugin. If you open it up, you'll see another folder with my name on it. And inside of that, you'll see two effects for After Effects. This is Clarity version one and Clarity version 2. The first one was just kind of an initial test that I did and it works all right. The second one is the really good one though. You'll probably want to use. I included them both just in case though because every shot is different and maybe playing around with just these two could give you the effect you want. So let's go ahead and talk about how you install this. It's pretty straightforward actually. Uh, you, can, you just need a new finder window so you, you can go up to finder new finder window command in is what I do all the time and just come over to your applications folder uh, you should see After Effects pretty much straight off the bat of course you can search for it After Effects yeah but uh, After Effects uh, and you've got your plugins in your presets folder you can actually drop this into either of these two folders and it will work just fine but I keep it, I'll go ahead and install it in my plugins folder just to show you how since I already got it in my presets folder. And uh, what you'll see when you jump into the plugins folder is all your different effects that you have. Um, and what you can do is just drag this folder straight in there and it should move over there. Um, if you use control C and control V, you can uh, make sure to copy that instead of just moving it over in case something goes wrong you always have a backup you can just keep that in your downloads but that's more or less how you install it 
Okay, so when we jump over to After Effects, uh, here is the footage that we actually started with. It's basically the exact same image, and here is basically what we've turned it into with this clarity plugin that I created, or preset is what it's technically called, and some color grading. So let's try to duplicate this basically. And uh, here is the actual video. It's just a quick video that I shot, kind of a static shot. It doesn't move much, there's just some wind blowing and cloud movements. Okay, now the easiest way to get to the clarity plugin is just to search clarity. And you'll see here it comes up. So if we go ahead and just drop version one on here, uh, you can see it doesn't really do much. Um, you have to kind of turn it up, and it doesn't do all that great of a job of adding clarity without kind of completely blowing out everything you've done. So I've gone ahead and included it just to kind of uh, allow for that option because I know every shot doesn't work exactly the same way, so maybe that might work for a shot you're working on, or if you're going for that kind of look. Uh, I've seen that work in uh, like uh, 300 and movies like that. Uh, but let's go ahead and just drag the version 2 on here. Now as you can see with version 2, it kind of gives us a starting point. And it's definitely making it pop. Now, let's go ahead and zero all these values out so we can take a look at what they do. Okay, so uh, here we have our f a couple of effects here. And you don't want to mess with these unless you're just trying to customize it or whatever. Um, but basically we have a detail puller. And this is what's going to pull the detail out of the sky. And then you have a desaturate. It's going to, most of the time, kind of oversaturate your work. And so by turning this up, it'll actually kind of desaturate it. Okay. And then you have a darken slider, which is going to bring down the exposure some. Because as I said earlier, when you really pull this up, what you what starts to happen is it starts to blow out. So the darken slider actually should probably be called an exposure slider because it will knock out that blowing out that it does and just in turn give us the great popping effect. And of course the desaturate slider is always there. For this particular shot you don't really have to use it a lot but um, when you first add on the effect it will have some those default values and those are just kind of uh, default values that seem to work pretty well whenever I was playing around with it. So 40, 53, 31, and negative 24 seem to work pretty well for what I was doing, but not particularly in this shot right here. So uh, that's basically how you work the plugin. Now what I actually want to do do in this tutorial, rather than just show you how to work the preset, is show you how I actually put it together. That way, when you're doing your color grading or whatever you're going to use this plugin for, I would assume, color grading, uh, you can kind of work with it or just start from scratch if it's not working for you. I know every shot's going to be different, and this plugin just might not work at all with the shot that you're doing. But if you know what's inside of it, maybe you can take some of these effects and ideas and apply those to the shot. So this tutorial won't be completely useless for you. Yeah, it'll just be completely useless. Okay, so the easiest way to just figure out what all these are, because I put effects don't change here just to try to make sure people didn't mess with them too much, is just to click the About button. And uh, <laughs> this is very handy when you're looking at presets that people make, because you can basically see it exactly how they do it. Now, the first effect we have here is a CC composite. Uh, we also have Equalize. We have Brightness and Contrast. We have tint and another brightness and contrast. Now, if you look at all of these, they were actually all linked together with slider values. Um, now, I'm not going to show you exactly how I set that up because that'll be kind of hard to explain as several effects are linked to one slider value and that would just take way too long to explain. But I will basically show you how I used each and every one of these plugins and how you can use it. Mainly speaking, CC Composite and Equalize. Now we'll start with Equalize, as this was the one that really separates the version 2 from version 1. In version 1, I just used a CC Composite to try to push the contrast, but I discovered the Equalize effect when I was making version 2, 
and actually that came in handy a lot. Now as you can see when we first drop on the equalize it's going to completely just make our image look awful. And part of the reason for that is actually because this grass down here just really sucks in this shot and the clarity does not work on it at all. So what I actually did in the final shot was just kind of cheated a little bit and masked around the grass a little bit to make it look better. And uh, let's see. So I kind of cheated when I was putting together the actual shot I showed you earlier. But even with that out of the way, this equalize still just completely sucks at what it's doing. And part of the reason is because it's set to Photoshop style. I don't really com I'm not going to claim to completely understand what this effect does, but I can tell you how I did it. Now if you switch it to RGB, it changes up a little bit, doesn't look much different. But if you change it to brightness, it actually slightly changes. And rather than seeming to play with the saturation as much, it seems to play with the lightness and uh, that type of thing. So as we turn this value down, you can see it pulls the saturation. Now the reason I don't like it is because it way too quickly blows it out. And that was not exactly what we were looking for. So I actually took the brightness and contrast effect and just kind of lowered the brightness as it was blowing it out. And that seemed to work. But what I still noticed was as you bring this up, the equalize just does not have enough there to, you know, do what it's supposed to. So what I found out was that if you combine the values of the equalize effect with the values of the brightness and con, well, I mean with CC composite, excuse me, it does a pretty cool thing. Okay, so when you first drop on the CC composite, it'll do absolutely nothing because it's just compositing the exact same image back on top of itself, which does you no good whatsoever. But the cool thing about CC composite is it's got all the blending modes. You can choose how it composites, all that kind of cool stuff. Now what I'm actually gonna do is choose for it to overlay on top of itself. And you can see it almost does the same thing as the equalize effect but it blows it out in different areas. So by increasing the two together, you get a very nice looking contrast. Now again, this does kind of start to blow things out. So in the actual plugin, I added another instance of brightness and contrast and actually just linked the brightness value to this CC composite. So that's the first part of how I set it up was linking this brightness and contrast to this equalized value this brightness and contrast and this CC composite value and then linking the CC composite and the equalize to the same null object and then linking these two effects to the darken slider. But anyways, that's how I created this plugin. Hopefully this plugin will come in, um, this preset will come in handy to you in one way or another. If nothing else, just the idea of using some of these effects will hopefully help you create something cool on your next project. My name is Mackenzie Chriswell, and I'll see you next time.